prior to performing any white ink troubleshooting, always pull out your white ink cartridges and verify that your cartridges have ink in them. If your white ink cartridges are empty, replace them, perform a long white fill, followed by a print head clean and a nozzle check. If your nozzle check is still poor, then proceed with white ink troubleshooting. If you are experiencing banding or missing white nozzles, as we can see here, we can see that our white channel one nozzle is completely missing and our white channel two nozzle is experiencing a lot of banding. The first thing we're going to do is perform a white channel clean. Once the clean is complete, we'll perform another nozzle check. As you can see here, we still have some bands that appear. We'll then perform another white channel clean, followed by another nozzle check. However, if after three attempts, your nozzles still don't recover, we will then perform a visual check. Okay. To perform the visual check, we'll first open the cover. Once the cover is open, we'll set the lid prop. Now that the lid prop is set, we'll begin by checking the ink bay valves and the purge line dia filters for leaks. We'll first check the ink bay valves for any leaks. To check the ink bay valve, we'll first remove the ink mist covers. To remove the ink mist covers, we'll undo the screws. Once the screws have been removed, we'll pull out the auxiliary tube and remove the ink mist cover. Next, we'll place the waste ink tank off to the side. Then we'll locate the ink bay valves and we'll just follow it down to look for any white ink that is leaked. As you can see, there's some white ink leakage which has occurred. In this case, we'll want to contact tech support so that we can replace the white ink valves. The next step in the visual process is to check the purge line dia filters. To check the purge line dia filters, We'll now remove the front ink mist cover. Now we'll remove the front ink mist cover. Be careful not to damage any of the cable connections as we pull this out. First, we'll check the purge line closest to the center of the printer for any leaks. We're looking for the purge line dia filters, which look like this. We'll follow it down to the bottom of the printer. And if it's leaking, you will see evidence of white ink. Then we'll also check the purge line in the front of the printer. If needed, we can remove the auxiliary tank so we can get a better view. We'll locate the purge line dia filter and follow it down 
to check for any leaks. If you notice any leaks, you will need to contact tech support in order to replace your purge line dia filters. Keep in mind that the tubes will be zip tied to the purge line dia filter. When you replace the filter, you will then need to re-zip tie the tubes. Next, we'll look to the maintenance station to look at the white ink tube connections to see if there's any ink which is leaked out. If so, We'll need to re-secure the tubes to ensure that the connection is tight and there is no air leak for the ink to leak out. The next thing we'll check is the print head carriage. We're going to check the dampers and the tube connections at the print head for any leaks. We'll remove the cover. So now we'll check the tube connections at the white print heads to look for any ink spills. We'll clean up a little to see if we can identify the problem. Here we can see that the tubes have pushed up, creating an air leak, which is allowing the ink to spill out. This will allow air to go into the print head, thus drying the ink in the print head. We will now re-secure the tubes onto the print head to give it a tight seal. We'll push down our tubes to ensure we have a good seal between the tube and the print head. Now you can see that the tubes go all the way down the print head post. This will ensure that the ink does not leak out of the tubes. Next, we're going to check the dampers for any leaks. Using the Allen key, we'll remove the screws. When we remove the second screw, be sure to hold on as this plate will drop down. Once we've removed the screws, we'll remove the plate and check for any ink spillage. Here we can see that our white dampers have leaked out ink. At this time, we'll have to check the, the tube connections at the dampers and inspect the dampers for any issues. Keep in mind that if you notice any ink leaks on the bottom plate, that can also be the cause of the ink leak which occurred in your maintenance station if there is leaks present there. The next thing we're going to check are the white dampers for any air leaks or physical leakage of ink out. So we want to check to see if there are any holes in the dampers. Also, we want to check to see if the dampers are blowing out or if they're depressed too much inward. This will inform us that the dampers will need to be replaced. And go for it. Next, we'll check the tube connections at the dampers and at the print heads. As you can see, the, the tube here is kinked and it will need to be cut and reattached. Since we have a kink in the tube, we'll now remove the tube, cut it above the kink, and reattach the tube. A kink in the tube will restrict ink flow to dampers or the print head. So we will gently push up. Until the tube is released, we'll now cut right above the kink. and reattach the tube to the print head post. Be careful when replacing the tube to not kink it once again. Once the tube has reached the bottom of the print head post, we'll then refill the ink system and perform a print head clean, followed by another nozzle check. If small amounts of air are present, such as here in the tubes, 
Next, we will check for air bubbles in the tubes and dampers. If small amounts of bubbles are present, such as this, we will perform a short ink fill to push the bubbles out. Next, we'll check for large missing gaps or empty lines. Here, we can see that our lines have now become empty. Our dampers have also become empty. If large amounts of bubbles are present, such like this, throughout the lines, we will then move forward to follow the procedure for air in the lines. To perform the short ink fill, we will go to Menu, Maintenance, the Fill Ink tab. We will select the short fill for the white channels only. Once the short ink fill is complete, we'll perform a print head clean followed by a nozzle check. Also be sure to perform visual checks to ensure that there's no more air in the line. If there is still air in the line, as you can see here, we will then perform additional short fills. If after three short fills, there is still air present in the line, you will move forward to performing the procedure for air in the lines. To perform a short ink fill, we will go to Menu, Maintenance, the Fill Ink tab, select the short fill, and the white channel only. If after performing the visual checks and fills, you're still experiencing problems with your nozzle checks and excessive banding, we will then perform a nozzle plate soak. We'll begin by releasing the carriage. Once the carriage is released, we'll bring it to the center of the printer. Using the cleaning solution and a lint-free wipe, we will completely saturate the lint-free wipe. We'll fold it into a smaller piece so we don't have a lot of spillage. And we will completely saturate the wipe. Once the wipe is fully saturated, we'll open it up and we will place it on the print head nozzle plate. We're going to place it underneath the white print heads. Using light pressure, we will press up against the print heads. We will leave the wipe here for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we will remove the wipe. You will see white ink on the lint-free wipe. After this, we will re-secure the carriage and perform a print head clean followed by a nozzle check. If during cleans or fills, no ink appears to be moving, we will perform a maintenance station function test. To perform the maintenance station function test, we'll first release the carriage Once released, 
We will then go into the advanced menu. In order to activate the advanced menu, you will press the print power key eight times until advanced shows up. We'll then go to the maintenance station tab. We will first turn the white valve on, then turn the white pump on. Once the white ink, maintenance station valve and pump are on, we will remove the bubble breakers. Set them aside. Using a syringe with a needle and distilled water, we will test to see if the maintenance station pumps are working by inserting distilled water into the white gaskets. We are testing to see if it is being sucked down. Here we can see that the pumps are sucking the distilled water down. Next, we will perform a maintenance station suction test. Using your maintenance station gauge block, we will use the flat side and set it on top of the maintenance station. Once it is set on top, we will press down to check to see if the maintenance station has good suction. Afterwards, we will turn off the maintenance station pump. Once the maintenance station pump is off, we will leave the valve on and we will pull up on the gauge block to check for resistance. If there is resistance, we can then move into performing an ink fill followed by a print head clean and nozzle check to see if our white ink flow has improved. If there is no resistance and it pulls off right away, we will then clean the gaskets and perform this check again. To clean the gaskets, we'll use a lint-free wipe and we'll clean the surface of the white gaskets. We will then turn the pump on and re-perform the test. After pressing down on the maintenance station gauge block, we will turn off the white pump and we will check for resistance. After performing your maintenance station suction test, be sure to turn the white valve off. If air is present in the system, a flush procedure will be required. To perform a flush procedure, we will first need to remove the white ink cartridges. Once the cartridges have been removed, we will perform a long fill. You will perform long fills until the white ink is fully removed from the system. To flush the system, we will perform long fills. To perform a long fill, we will go to Menu, Maintenance, the Fill Ink tab. We will select Long and White Channel Only.
We will perform an additional five to six long fills until the white channel has completely cleared. Once the ink has been flushed out of the printer, we will then reinsert the white ink cartridges and refill the system with white ink. If you are experiencing issues with white vibrancy or your white nozzle checks appear very dull, you will first follow the procedure for air in the lines and flush the white ink out of the system. Once the ink has been flushed out of the system, we will use cleaning solution cartridges to flush the lines. What this will do is it'll clean the lines out to ensure there's no white ink left in the lines. We'll insert the cleaning solution cartridges into the ink bay. Once inserted, we'll perform long fills to flush the lines out. We'll perform two long fills and then remove the cartridges. Once the cleaning cartridges have been inserted into the printer, we will perform two long fills to clean the ink tubes of any white ink that is left over. Now that the white lines have been filled with cleaning solution, we will pull out the cleaning cartridges. And we will perform an additional two long fills to flush out the cleaning solution.
At this time, perform a visual check to ensure that the white tubes are clear of cleaning solution. Once the white tubes are empty, we will reinsert the white ink cartridges and refill the system with white ink. Once the system has been cleared, we will now reinsert the white ink cartridges and refill the white lines with white ink. We will now perform one white long fill and one white short fill. Now that the system has been cleared, we will refill the lines with white ink. We will first perform one long fill followed by one short fill. We'll begin with the long fill. Once the long fill is complete, we'll perform a short fill. If your white lines have not fully filled up, you'll perform additional fills in the form of short fills until white ink has reached the print head. Once white ink has reached the print head, you'll perform a white channel print head clean followed by a nozzle check. You'll perform cleans as needed until you achieve a 90% nozzle check or better. Once the white tubes have been refilled, we will first perform a white channel clean, followed by a nozzle check. Here we can see our white channels still have bands in them. We will now perform another print head clean. Since our CMYKs also have bands, we will perform a full six channel clean. Once the print hand clean is complete, we'll perform an additional nozzle check. Be sure to remove the old nozzle check from the table and perform another print head clean to make sure that the white channels look good. We'll slide the paper up so that we can use a clean line. So now we'll perform another nozzle check. Okay. 
now we can see that the nozzle check is 90% or better. We can begin general printing. If the white ink is not vibrant or dull or appears grainy, you'll want to circulate your white inks for about 10 minutes. To circulate the white ink, we'll go to Menu, Maintenance, the Fill Ink tab, and we'll turn on White 1 and White 2. After 10 minutes, we will turn off both white ink circulation pumps. Then we'll perform a white channel print head clean, followed by a nozzle check. You'll perform print head cleans until you get a good nozzle check.